Okay, here we go. All right, Psalms 119, we have a continuation of thought. And uh, let's look here in Psalms 119. And let's look in 123 is where we left off. I have executed justice and righteousness. Now this is uh, the test personal testimony of the writer of this psalm. Leave me not to my own oppression. And don't leave me in the hands of these guys. And we got a good idea of what oppression looked like uh, last time we were together. And there's uh, three or four uh, ideas of it here in the psalms. And we looked at that together as well. Be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud. There now we get the arrogance. Uh, these arrogant people who think that they can make the rules as they go, you know. Uh, the things that would satisfy them. Uh, some people use their religion for really their own platform. you got to watch out for that. And um, that's what David's referring to. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation. Now salvation there means deliverance. Usually when you see the word salvation in these Psalms, it has to do with deliverance, and many times physically or mentally. And that's what you have there. And for the word of thy righteousness, uh, there is greater issue here. There's greater issue here. Deal with thy servant according to thy mercy and teach me thy statutes. Uh, later on down in verse 26, it is time for thee, Lord, to work, for they've made void thy word. That idea is not actually liter literally void, but they uh, bring up principles against what the word of God says. And a good example of that was the, uh, was the scribes and Pharisees, you remember, that wanted to criticize Jesus' disciples for uh, rubbing grain in their hands, letting the wind blow the dross and eat it, and they said, oh, look, they're working on the Sabbath day. And then our Lord went to task with them, didn't He? And through their traditions, they were making um, void, or they were uh, making of no effect the Word of God. So uh, that's a good example of that. Okay. Uh, mine eyes fail for thy salvation or deliverance and the word of thy righteousness. And you see, that's what's at the center of the issue. We start out with it in verse 121. Executed justice and righteousness. Now in verse 23, for the word of thy righteousness. Um, so we can see that uh, that uh, is at the center of the issue as well. The writer understands if we don't hold to the word of righteousness, we've got problems. We'll have anarchy. Uh, sin will run rampant. Uh, the, 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 that, um, uh, that, that which is wrong will be called right, and the right will be called wrong. Uh, the evil will be called righteousness, and righteousness will be called evil. We're kind of seeing that in our country. You're going to have to admit that, huh? Um, and uh, one day the tolerance will be that which is reigning, so watch out. That's what always happens, okay? Uh, it's historically true, too. So just understand what, what the psalmist is saying. Uh, without, uh, you know, this is what Jesus told those that he taught on the mount. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? righteousness uh, without righteousness we don't have salvation without righteousness we don't have any kind of union or communion with God either one we're not, not in good shape here um, so let's understand uh, what is at the center now the psalmist is ple pleading his case before God and he's tirelessly looking, anticipating God's deliverance and to see God's righteousness prevail. Uh, and thus, uh, th this uh, picture of the eyes, uh, that's found in other places. And I think we were, uh, we were about to look at that. He says, mine eyes fail for your deliverance. I, I, I'm looking intently. I'm, I'm looking with anticipation. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> That doesn't mean God isn't working. God has His way of working in His time. Look in the book of Jeremiah, however. The book of Jeremiah. 
chapter 9. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9. And let's look in verse 1. Now understand, um, Jeremiah is an interesting uh, personality. Uh, Daniel is more straightforward. He's, he's right there and he's not going anyplace. <laughs> Uh, but then he was deported. Uh, Jeremiah is that, we call him the weeping prophet. And the reason that he's weeping isn't because he's a wimp. I don't think you can come to that conclusion with what he did and what happened to him. So that's out. But he was a patriot. He, it just killed him to have to give his messages. Now, I love giving my messages. I have a good time with it. There's been some situations that's been a little tense over the years, and I had to give messages. And, uh, but I, I, never, um, I, never had, I never went quite this low, weeping and lamenting. Um, maybe I'm just not as compassionate as Jeremiah was. But, um, he was a patriot to the core. And he hated to have to give the messages. It isn't that he hated the messages or hated God. Although he does get into it a little bit, he tells God, you, you've made me a liar. Uh, and uh, you remember that, um, uh, therefore, I'm not going to say anything. And then uh, the word, uh, he, couldn't, he couldn't keep from, from uh, giving the message that God put in his heart. Um, because Jeremiah was constantly telling them this and this and this is going to happen. And uh, the people of, uh, of Israel got to the point where they said, ah, enough of this talk. Let's get on with it. That's how stupid they were. And then God brings Nebuchadnezzar down. So, um, but notice in Jeremiah 9, Oh, that my head were waters, and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them. For they are all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. He's using those terms in spiritual terms. Uh, you see, James does that. He does, ye adulterers and adulteresses. Now, whoa, wait a minute, James. No, he means that in spiritual terms. He means that in spiritual terms. Uh, he, you've cheated against God with, uh, with, with something other than faith. That's James. James is the tester of faith. Uh, Hebrews, we have Esau. He's labeled an adulterer. Well, in spiritual terms, he is, you see. All right, that's how he's using that here. An assembly of treacherous men, and they bend their tongues like their bow for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. Uh, and that was, that was uh, uh, Jeremiah's situation. And that, that, um, that idea right there is very important. Um, where it says that trust not thy brother, a very brother utter, uh, that will utterly supplant. And every neighbor will walk with slanders. But you see that idea up in verse 3. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. So they proceed from evil to evil. Listen, you, you can't be neutral. I think that was a song that Mr. Yeah, he did. Mr. Um, that uh, Mr. Cardwell had me sing. Do you remember that song? What will you do with Jesus? Neutral you cannot be. Uh, and uh, you can't be neutral. There's no sitting on the fence. The fence sitter always falls off on the wrong side, by the way. Inevitably falls off on the wrong side. Okay, enough of that. Look in chapter 14, verse 15, Jeremiah. 14, verse 15. And uh, we'll let, listen to him, if you will. Uh, Therefore, thus saith... Well, i got to back up. Look in verse 13. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine. But I will give you assured peace in this. The false prophets were there strumming the, the tune that everybody wants to hear. Boy, we have a lot of that today. We have a lot of that today. 
Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. They sent them not, neither have... I sent them not, sorry. Neither have I commanded them, neither spoke unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and I, I, and a thing not, of naught, and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. <laughs> They they just gave themselves their own judgment. Kind of like uh, David, remember? Bathsheba, Nathan comes in and gives him that parable. And, uh, oh, David got mad. Remember, David was a shepherd. He uh, God really set him up on that one. And uh, David being a shepherd in the first place, ooh, yeah, that really hit home, right? Ah, oh, yeah, that man's going to pay for folding with his life. And I get to that point, and looky what happens. Can we start again, Bible class? Okay. Oh, forgot.